Hello everyone and welcome to PCEA Kasarani West Parish. Um, this is the teens panel in front of you. We are about to discuss on one of uh, one among the topics that have been brought out over the COVID-19 season. And with us we have a team of panelists. I'd like them to introduce themselves. Hi everyone, my name is Charlene Joroge. I'm in Form 3. I study at Nova Pioneer. Hi everyone, my name is Kezia Nyambura. I completed high school. Hi everyone, I'm Joanne Duta. I'm in Form 2. I'm in Bishop Gatim. Hello everyone, my name is Edward Karanja. I'm your pastor and friend. Glad to be here this evening. Hello everyone, my name is Noel Muthomi and I'm glad to be here. I completed high school. Hello everyone, my name is Elvis Rari and I'm in Form 4 High School. Hi everyone, my name is Sylvia Kamau. I completed high school and I'm glad to be here. Um, thank you very much for having introduced yourself. So we are going to get right into business. Um, teenage pregnancies. Ladies and gentlemen, over the past few months we have noted an increase in the number of teenage pregnancies. And we would like to specially discuss on the causes that bring about these pregnancies. So let's get to it. What are some of the causes, Shali? Um, I think that one of the causes that we have is the teenagers lacking love and affection from their family. So like if you see that um, a teenager feels like they do not get that love or they do not deserve that family, they tend to look for it somewhere else and they engage themselves in some in, with some other people to give them that kind of love and affection. Yes. Oh, if you would allow me, yeah. uh, Noel, I would ask Shalene, the teenagers lack love. How can we love our teenagers? Um, I think that one of them can, the parents should uh, make more time to spend with their teenagers. Like, um, you can see that even when the parents come home, they either engage um, in their phones or do work at home, but they do not take time to um, talk to their teenagers and like just spend a bit of time with them. Mm. Sometimes the parents want to spend time with the teenagers and then you say, how was your day? They only answer fine, okay, and rush back to their rooms or rush back to their phones. So how do I spend time with people that are not talking to me? Uh, if I may, I think uh, just find the appropriate word to use or the appropriate how, how to attack that person. You're not attacking like fiercely or something, but you want to get into that person. Like if being able to reach out to that person who is inside there, who is not coming out or even trying to tell you what she has been, he or she has been going through. Try to ask questions. The right questions will lead to the right answers. But if you ask me how I am, I'll just answer you, I'm fine. But tell me, how are you? How are you? Has your day, has your day been? How, what have you done? I'll be like, so this person wants to know more about what I've been doing this day, and I will answer. But if you just ask me how my day was, it will stay that way. And if you continue that way, I'll be answering, fine, okay, good. But today you can't say, what did you do today? Tomorrow you can't say, oh, I saw your friends come. Did you do anything? Like, just like that. And you find that you're creating a connection that even at a point she'll come and notice, today you've not asked me. So let me just tell you in case you want to know just mm -hmm. that, I think. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We have discussed effectively on the point of love and affection. Let us check on another one. Kezia, if you may. Uh, another cause of teenage pregnancies, especially at this time, is marital conflict. When, when COVID-19 came in, we thought that it would bring families together since uh, many people are not going to work, they are not really engaged outside. So we thought by keeping us inside our homes, families would be united. But it is slowly proving us wrong because we realize that um, many families are breaking at this point. And when you're having issues with your spouse, you, didn't, you don't really get enough time to connect with your children. And if they don't get the attention they need from their parents, then they, when they get this one person who is giving them that kind of attention, they will fall into their trap. And this is how men uh, are able to lure small girls into, yeah. That is a very good point. You find that most of the times, these marital conflicts will bring more concentration onto the person involved. For example, um, 
I am a father. I have a wife and we have marital conflicts. I'll first concentrate on my marital conflicts because they affect me directly. So much that I will forget my child who also needs the same attention I am giving towards this um, situation at hand. Mm -hmm. That is why you find that many men, thank you Kezia for that point, you find that many men will actually get to lure these people into traps and they become, the girls become victims of rape and teenage pregnancies just because of an issue that would have been solved by sitting down. Mm -hmm. So you're telling us that moms and dads should stop fighting? Yes. Because when there's fighting, it means that uh, you people will start going to look for attention elsewhere. Yes. Because you're saying that you'll, you'll somewhere else will keep your attention, and before you know it, then it means one may even get pregnant. And I hope parents, you are getting this, that it is important for wives and husbands to get along with each other, because if we don't, then the children will get lost in between. Thank you very much, uh, Reverend. Um, let's check on another point, because we have already seen two points already, the point of love and affection, the point of marital conflicts, we should avoid such things, and where, wherever we are wrong, let us be able to correct. Um, let's go to another point, Joy, if you may. Okay, yes, um, poverty is another cause of the increased teenage pregnancies, because everyone right now has a tough financial time. So the children, okay, let's go to the parents. Some parents are actually selling their children to earn that money. They are selling to older men who are going to just, who are, who are eventually going to impregnate them. So to the parents, you're not supposed to, okay, for this is not mainly in the, in the urban areas, mostly in the rural areas, because you think that your daughter is a, a source of wealth, a way that you can get some, some money. So if you're selling them, you're exposing them to more danger, thinking that you're actually saving yourself. That's not the truth. Well, the challenge of poverty and even, you know, our girls going out for money with men, is it more a bigger challenge in the rural or is it a bigger challenge in the urban? Mm. By the way, I think it's also in, in both rural and urban because in rural areas, parents tend to send the, send the child away as a bride, as a, an asset. Like, I'll give you my child, you give me the money, I get the money, I feed the other kids. But in urban areas, the child is, is, is in, a, in a situation where I am a role model, I am, I am responsible. If this, my, my younger siblings won't eat, my parents have been retrenched, they don't have anywhere to go. I am a woman, or maybe I am a girl, and I know if I go out there and find money, I'll be able to help it out. So the child is there trying to get a source of money, but at the end of it all ends up to do something like prostitution so that that person can get money and do it. So it's either in the rural or urban, all of them are the same. So you're saying in the rural, it is girls get married off early, mm -hmm. so that the bride price comes in or bread wealth comes back and helps the children back at home. Yes. In the urban, you won't tell me it is teenage prostitution. Yes. Even, you know, we are trying to color it, but I can hear you talking about teenage prostitution, yes. whereby we, when there is poverty at home, then the girls go out, sell themselves, or the parents encourage themselves, them to go and sell themselves, so that there's an income for the family. Yes. That is very dangerous. Parents that are teenagers in high school can engage in teenage prostitution. It's very dangerous. At the same time, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to think of this thing in this perspective of mine, where you find that people are not given the exact right to choose for themselves what they want. They are limited. And um, as Sylvia has said, she has actually interrelated it to intermarriages. You find that a person will just align her daughter or his daughter for the purpose of bride or being a bride as early as they can so that they can get some impulsive rewards. Let's say um, I get I sell my child for a cow. That cow will help me now but not later. We don't always think about it in that direction. And that is why many girls are just being sold away into intermarriages just as she had said. I also think that if if parents yes parents have been retrenched or they have been given indefinite leaves.
but that parent can think of something like starting a kibanda somewhere where that child can be put. If you want to help your child in a way that she won't go try to look for teenage prostitution and she will feel useful in the family, why don't try at starting something small for her that she will feel useful and at the same time, she, the, at the end of it all, there will be food at the table. That's yeah. just also to add on the same point, I think we are putting too much pressure on the parents. There are also situations that the parent might die and the child is left being an orphan. So like there is also that issue of not given the right to choose because the parent has left other siblings and automatically as the firstborn you will need to look for means to like cater for the younger one. So you can go and get married to an older person who has money. So like even prostitution may become an option. So like also when you're putting too much pressure on the parents, you also need to be like facing the other issues of the orphan children that have gone through these issues. So that if you may be able to support one, you can go and adopt or go and make some donations to help the child. So yeah. But it's not there's something yes. I'm hearing here. Yes. That all of us in our discussion is like the teenage pregnancy is the girls becoming pregnant but the people responsible are the older people. You won't tell me there's no teenage young men impregnating teenage girls or even young adults like university students impregnating teenage girls. It's only the older ones. That also relates to the older people because they do not give us the information. They think we cannot handle the truth. They do not give us the options like they are contraceptives, they are family the issues of family planning, pills, some injections. They do not give us that information because we pretend that it's not happening. Well the statistics from the media say otherwise. So we cannot be like it. it's not happening. Yeah. But it's happening. So you need So to the the parents should give contraceptives. No, they should give <laughs> they should give, <laughs> they should give the information yeah. because it's still going to happen. Yeah. It's still it's going to happen. In short, we should just have the information. Yeah. Yeah. So that like, whether you have the choice or not, you just have the, the, the yeah. knowledge. What? Yes. What information are you talking about? Like I sit down with my teenage children and tell them they are condoms? <laughs> tell them they are... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> be open with yeah. them. And the sex education should also be introduced in the curriculum because Okay, if it was another issue, they are not pregnancy, they are not teenage pregnancy, we should not be discussing this, but they are. Mm. So, we can handle the truth, we can. Basically what we are saying is that uh, as parents give us sex education, they should be open, they should stop shying away from telling us the truth, because all they tell us is, Usifanye. Yes, usifanye, but why shouldn't I do this? And that is why sometimes they get the urge to do some things. So, I have told you as a parent, wait until you get married. Ufanya. Sasa unataka ni kwambie usifanye kwa nini ingine? It is in human, it is in our human nature to just know. Umeniambia nisifanya na nikifanya tutaenda Andre by the way. That's just it. I will do so that I know the repercussions. Because I know why should it like you're not telling me why I shouldn't do it. You're not telling me how not to stay how to stay away. You're just telling me Nikipuana. How is that even? So, <laughs> please can one of you be a parent tell me how do I address my teenage child, girl, or son and tell them uh, don't engage in sex. Uh Kwanin, please. Okay. Like, just <laughs> sit them down. Yeah. This is my child. Yeah. My child. Yes, this is yes. yes. <laughs> things in this world. Things that you cannot comprehend because you have not yet been married. Yes. But they are going to buy it to blue and But if you decide to do that, they are means to keep yourself safe. From the diseases, from the pregnancies, <laughs> from the devil. So they are contraceptives. They are means of family planning. Yes. My child, keep safe. So yeah, that's how you should do it. You are not encouraging the child to do it, but he might. There is that probability. He might. Will you be there? Will you at be the same time, don't do this. You at the same it. time, right? yeah. at the same time, you know, by the way, what is happening is that parents are not exactly telling them how to handle such situations. And you find that maybe the child has been pregnant simply because of rape. 
she's a victim of rape. The parents do not actually address that. They don't say that in case this and this happens, go to the police, report, call a, a parent, talk to your parent. They just say, don't do it. Otherwise, you'll get out of my house. Mm. Yes. We're not really trying to justify ourselves. I think all what we're trying to say is, don't really shy away from telling us these things. And there's a way you should tell us. By telling me at Vijana, that won't help me because I will look for all means possible. And that is where some things will happen. You understand me? That is where some things will happen. So tell me, these boys, are you getting me? Like, don't really tell us don't without telling us why. So I will say, and this is not an easy thing. That I sit down, the teenagers, parents will sit down, the teenagers, tell them, please, don't engage in sex before marriage. However, hey, <laughs> <laughs> like if you really get tempted, no. like you feel you can't, then here is a point. Oh, here is a point. <laughs> you are not getting my point. Yes, I'm saying you should not encourage us to do it. Yes. But what if, like, it still like, applies when you get married. Maybe you do not want to get a child that time. Uh -huh. You're not given the information. We like go on such Google. Like it doesn't it doesn't appear to me when I'm in that situation ways to prevent teenage pregnancies. I cannot just take out my phone and go with because you have just told me don't do this out. You have not told me the effects that will come out of this. You have not shown if I do this, you should use this at least to protect you. Not just from teenage pregnancies, from STIs that may transmitted through the act. And then say, don't talk to boys. Then Kezia says, then it means one will look for an opportunity to talk to the boy yeah. behind the corner. Yeah. So should I tell you as, hey, <laughs> now the issue is, eh, do I now tell you as you talk to the boys, Shalane, you should hide around the corner and make sure you carry no. a no. King Gaimara no. just in case. <laughs> You should do this. Like, okay, I'm not saying you should do this, but you should try and like, for example, look in Yambia, don't, don't, like, don't interact with boys. I'll be like, why? I mean, how can I only interact with girls? So just tell me, you guys have hormones that we are coming up, you're changing. Like, talk to us. Talk to us about everything, completely everything. Don't hide things from us because eventually we will come and know. Just tell me, you have hormones and when you're close to a boy, you may feel this and this. So as you're interacting with these boys, be careful. Okay, you're saying you'll feel, when you're close to a boy, you'll feel this and this. What is that, this and this? Okay, let me, oh my let me summarize the point. <laughs> yeah. Knowledge is power, ignorance is bliss. If knowledge is power, ignorance is bliss. Uh, knowledge is power, ignorance is bliss. bliss. Yeah. Uh -huh. So like bliss means bliss means it can take you to like if you do not have the knowledge, you will just do something and face the repercussions. Uh, bliss meaning it can take you to the drain yeah. or wherever. Yeah. Because if these teenagers had the knowledge, we are talking what if they had the knowledge? We didn't have these cases. We didn't have early mothers. People would not have the means to support the children. Yeah, as we take it back to the monitor, hear that knowledge is power, ignorance is bliss. Meaning, ignorance can make you feel excited, nice, but by the time you wake up from the bliss, you're already in a ditch. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what you're saying here, parents, we have been told, these teenagers can handle information. Mm -hmm. We give them the information as it is and let them know the dangers of engaging in sex before marriage. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, our panelists. Let's go on to the last thing. Um, maybe we have exhausted, I'm not sure whether we have exhausted the points that we had, but uh, if so, let us just go to the effects because in the scenario where it has happened, it has happened at Wizikata, but how do we handle the effects that come with it? Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to open the floor to anyone who um, has something to say? I think that one of the effects can be depression. So when that has happened to you and you get pregnant, especially for um, for girls, sorry, um, the family might neglect you. The society also might neglect you, and you will feel um, it's like you don't you don't fit in in some kind of 
way but it's better for you to talk to a person and for them to advise you on how to go about it because depression is a very serious thing and it can lead you to be for example suicidal or something like that yeah. thank you very much That's for good. that point yes um i suppose we can have another before we wind up okay also another effect uh, or what might come from the effect is learning from the situation, the scenario that has happened. Us as parents, us as teenagers, us as everyone in the whole country and the whole world, we should learn from the effects that have come with it. We should, parents, you should guide your children effectively, and children, you should listen to their best that you've given to your parents, but the parents should give us everything. So that if you are in such a scenario, we might be able to protect ourselves or rather run away from the person who is trying to assault us. So, yeah. And probably as we wind up, what would be the responsibility of a teenage girl? The parent has been told to love them, ensure that you spend time with them, give them information, knowledge is power. So what should the teenagers mm. do on their part? Maybe one briefly um, or two? I think you as a teenage girl, just be responsible. Know how to take care of yourself. Know what is harmful and know what is not harmful. Right now we are being exposed to the social media. Take good use of that social media. Learn how to research on those things that are harmful to you, those things that can make you go down and make you go up. Those things that make you confident and those things that make you not confident. Great. So that when you, when you get to that point where someone is trying to make you feel not not that good, you're like, yeah, I know, but trust in me, you're not getting anything from me. If that is what you want, you're not. Just that. Right? Also, uh, so be think, responsible. Mm -hmm. I think teen teenagers, especially girls, should find like older people to mentor them. And you just don't take, you don't, you just don't take anyone from any, anybody from anywhere to mentor you. You should at least get someone from the church, your parents, if you're not comfortable with your parents, just find that one person who is responsible and whom you're too comfortable talking to because when in case there's a case of sexual harassment you will tell them at least you're comfortable to talk to them about it if a man comes and tells you this and this and this and you feel it is not right you can also tell them about it and they'll advise you on what to do that's also a very pertinent point Be, have a mentor don't mentor don't be your own advisor teenagers that's what your fellow teenagers are saying don't advise yourself don't mentor yourself, don't guide yourself, get a mentor, it's necessary for you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, our Rev, and all of the panelists. I'd like to say that no man is an island. You're not meant to separate yourself. So if you feel anything bothering you concerning that direction, please, just go to your parent, just come to our Rev over here, go to anyone, and they will be able to assist you, anyone responsible, that is. Thank you very much. I've been your moderator, Noel Muthomi, and this has been the Teens Panel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We want to pray for all of us, and thank you, teenagers. Thank you, Moderator Noel. Let us pray for you. Loving God, loving Jehovah, we thank you for the teens in this panel. Lord, we pray that they will be daughters and sons of honor to themselves, and even their families, and even the church, oh Lord. We thank you for every teenager, every parent listening to us. We pray that there will be an understanding, Lord, between the parents and the teenagers, O oh Lord. We pray that every teenager viewing us, O oh Jehovah, will be a teenager of honor in this generation and generations to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much.